Good morning, everyone. It is such a nice day today, and I am in such a good mood because of it. Just going for my walk, sitting outside, doing a little meditating, and just, it's great. I love it. That's kind of the morning routine I've been attempting to go through every day. I have not been successful at doing all of it every single day, but I've been trying to like start my morning with a bit of activity, a little bit of sun exposure, and just a little bit of like chill time to let myself just kind of like clear my head space before I dive into work. So, so far today I've gotten in one like mini workout and later today I'm going to walk you guys through my whole like training split program whatever that I'm following right now as I am on this fat loss journey just kind of like explain what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. And today I also want to take you through a little bit more of a I don't want to say realistic day of eating while on a cut because my other what I eat in a day have been exactly what I've been eating in the day but those days have all been a little bit over my average goal so today what I have planned out is basically hitting my average goal for the week so I just wanted to walk you through rude so I just kind of wanted to walk you through like what I eat on a day where I am hitting my average goal for the week or a little bit below that just because like I, I I don't like showing days where I eat lower because I don't want people to think that they need to eat a very little amount but it's because I have other days where I'm averaging a lot more so I just want to take you through a day where I'm eating a little bit below my average so keep in mind this is so keep in mind, I am aiming for a weekly average as I go through this, and I have had a day this week where I ate about at maintenance, so I am gonna have to have days this week where I'm eating below my goal for my weekly average. So today is gonna be one of those days. I mean, maybe, who knows, I might, I might end up eating a little bit extra, <laughs> we'll see. So I'm about to go make breakfast, but really quick, I also stocked up a little bit on some snacking essentials for being in a deficit, because what I realized is that I'm pretty good at eating in a deficit, like I'm good at structuring my meals so that like I'm full and satiated but here's the thing I love snacks I've always been a snacker and so if I don't have snacks on hand I just crave snacks so if I have snacks on hand I'm less likely to crave snacks which doesn't really make sense but I wanted to get some like deficit friendly snacks so that if I do want to have a snack I can have a snack. So I am very, very excited to dig into this. I got this like two days ago, but I wanted to show you guys. So I haven't eaten any of it yet, and it's just been sitting there staring at me. So I did a little Thrive Market haul to get some snacks. So first things first, this is, I think, probably the most deficit-friendly snack is pork rinds. I got them in the maple bacon flavor because it adds a little bit of sweetness. So if you're craving that sweetness, you can get like the crunchy sweetness. Half the time I'm craving crunchy, half the time I'm craving sweet. So this is like perfect. And because it's pork rinds, it's like mostly protein. And these are absolutely delicious. And then again, just because most of the time I'm craving something crunchy, I got some seaweed snacks. I definitely thought this was the small version. I think these are big sheets of seaweed, but that's okay. It'd still be nice and crunchy. These are great because they're basically like air and water. So if you just want something to snack on without, you know, adding a bunch of calories or whatever, these are great. And then you guys know that forever, one of my favorite desserts has been cinnamon coconut wraps, which I know sounds dumb, but trust me, these are so good. And these hit the spot for me when I'm craving something sweet at the end of the day to just like round off my day. Just like two of these cinnamon coconut wraps and I'm good. Again, super clean ingredients. I got the Nuco brand from Thrive Market. It's Coconut meat, coconut water, coconut oil, and cinnamon. That's it. They're sweet. They got a little bit of cinnamon. Oof. Oh, they're good. Maybe I'll have one of these for dessert tonight. And then I decided to try something new. I don't know how I stumbled across these on Thrive Market. I think I was searching. They have a way of filtering through like different diets if you want to filter their products. They have, I think, over 80 different like dietary filters. So you can do vegan, paleo, AIP, you can do keto, whatever it is that you're following. I think I was searching. No, it couldn't have been paleo. I don't know what I was searching. I was searching through one of the filters and I found these things. And they're these like high protein beans. They sounded like a good idea at the time. I've never tried them before. You know what, let's try one. Can't recommend a product that I haven't tried. Ooh, interesting. They kind of look like lima beans, but orange. All right. Huh, I get the chili lime. This is definitely something that would hit the spot if I was just craving a little bit of a snack. I could just dump a few of these into a bowl and just like eat as I'm editing. Okay. Good choice, Marissa. Pat on the back. Oh, I think they're fermented too? I don't know. These are, these are nifty. 
I recommend. And then it, these last two things are not really snacks. They're just things, things that, that I wanted, wanted to have on hand. Um, I love this Yai's Thai yellow coconut curry stuff. It is delicious, to be fair. It's not the most deficit friendly because I think it's mostly coconut milk. So it is pretty calorie dense, but you don't need a lot of it. Like a little bit goes a long way. And it's a great way to just add flavor to dishes without, you know, having to add in a ton of extra food and calories and stuff. Y'all know I always have my nut milk. And so I was looking on Thrive for a different kind of nut milk to see what had the most protein. And I found this Elmhurst hazelnut milk. And it's literally just water and hazelnuts. So this will be fun to add to like my protein pancakes and my lattes and whatever else you put nut milk in. So that's my little fat loss snacks and pantry staples haul. As you guys know, every time I get my pantry staples, I get them from Thrive Market because Thrive Market makes it so easy to find healthy, natural products that are up to 25 to 50% off traditional retail prices. So you save the monies. I know joke was at Whole Foods the other day and I saw these guys and I was like, oh, I should get those. And then I checked the prices and I was like, you know what? We're just gonna get them on Thrive Market. But just so you guys know, I always talk about Thrive Market in the context of food because I am a foodie and I love food and they have a ton of organic non-GMO foods, but they also have other stuff that's not food. They have a ton of clean beauty products, which are awesome. They have safe supplements. They have a lot of non-toxic home cleaning products, which, is amazing. So if you're trying to commit to a healthier lifestyle overall, not just food, but you know, encompassing everything, Thrive Market is a great resource. Free right now, it's obviously making it a lot easier for me to focus on fat loss because I was able to sort through thousands of products for like high protein, um, paleo based, etc. So it was really easy to find all this stuff. But in general, this is just my go-to for any pantry items that I want or need. Right now, just to be completely transparent, they are facing a little bit of a back order due to everyone trying to stock up because of COVID. And so they are trying to get products out as fast as possible, but still maintain their carbon neutral shipping practices. So orders may be a little bit delayed and they're also quickly running out of like essential pantry staples that everyone is trying to buy, but they're trying their hardest to maintain their stock of all of that stuff as well. But right now Thrive Market is actually doing a COVID relief fund, which you can donate to without even getting a membership if you want. What they're doing is they're raising money and using that to give grocery stipends and Thrive Market memberships for free to people who could benefit most from it right now. So first responders, medical professionals, they're also helping out at-risk communities and immunocompromised individuals for whom going physically to a grocery store might be incredibly dangerous. And they're also providing relief for individuals whose health and financial stability may have been compromised by COVID-19. So I will leave a link down in the description if you want to donate. They're matching all the donations dollar for dollar. So far, over $100,000 have been donated. So they have contributed another $100,000, save $200,000 to support people who are in need and could benefit from this right now. So if you wanna just donate, you can do that. Or if you want to sign up for Thrive Market, you can also donate when you check out and place an order. They're offering a one month and a 12 month membership option. And if you sign up through my link, thrivemarket.com slash fit and nerdy, you can get yourself up to a $20 shopping credit. So Thrive Market not only makes it easier to live a fit and healthy lifestyle for me, but they're doing great things and they're on a mission to do great things and they're accomplishing it and it's great. And I think like you're just a great company and I'm very proud to be working with them because they're just, they're doing great things. So yeah, I highly recommend you sign up, check it out, thrivemarket.com slash fit nerdy, get yourself a $20 shopping credit, which you can choose to donate at checkout if you want or not. But enough about that, I am now hungry and it's breakfast time. I'm gonna heat up some leftovers. So I will show you, this is the, the top to the beans. I don't know why I'm playing with it, but I will show you what I'm having. Let's go. So breakfast is roasted vegetables and steak bites. I made this up the other day. It's just a New York strip steak. I think I have about seven, six ounces on here. So for the vegetables, we have sweet potato, butternut squash, and acorn squash all roasted in the oven. I just coated them in some avocado oil, a little bit of pepper, salt, paprika, chili, and cayenne roast in the oven for 20, 25 minutes at 425. As always, I overcooked the steak, but 
I'll survive. All right, I just planned and filmed another video that you probably have already seen. Three ways to speed up your metabolism. So if you haven't seen that, go check it out. But I'm a little hungry now, so I think it's time for lunch. But first, I'm gonna get in my second movement-y workout thing of the day. Okay, that's literally only like four minutes, but I'm hungry and I need to cook. So for lunch, I am making roasted fennel, red onion, and asparagus with some hard boiled eggs. And I'm crying a little bit from chopping the red onions. So sorry if it looks like I'm dying. But this is a recipe from the BuzzFeed 2015 Clean Eating Challenge. And if you are an OG, OG subscriber, like so OG that you were around from before I was Misfit and Nerdy, from when I had my previous channel that shall not be named you will know that the buzzfeed cleaning challenge was honestly my first like foray into trying to eat healthier and it was the first thing i really did that pushed myself out of my comfort zone health wise and the first time i really actively tried to cook for myself or actively thought about what healthy food meant and so it's honestly like one of the biggest things I did in my health and fitness journey. There were so many recipes that I loved and have been wanting to go back and do. So now is just the perfect opportunity to do it. So my lunch is from day one of the challenge and then my dinner is also gonna be from day one of the challenge. But today we're making the lunch from, oh, that's gonna make me cry again. We're making the lunch from scratch. So I will leave a link to the whole challenge as well as day one with both of the recipes for my lunch and dinner down in the description. Just enough time left to play with the kitty. So I am not someone who likes asparagus. So when I first had this recipe, when I first did the cleaning challenge, I was very, very skeptical. But to my surprise, I actually loved this recipe the first time I made it. I haven't made it since then, so we'll see if I still like it, but I'm excited to find out. I did the BuzzFeed cleaning challenge, I had legit never boiled an egg before. I had never made a hard boiled egg. And honestly, this may be the second time ever that I've made a hard boiled egg. This looks delicious. I know I love grilled red onion. Fennel, I haven't had since I made this years ago. And asparagus, I do usually try to avoid, but I remember liking it last time I did this. So let's take like a little bite of everything. Yeah, just like I remember, this is unbelievably good and it's so simple and I don't know why it's so freaking good but it is delicious and I don't know why I waited so long to remake this oh my goodness highly recommend we'll link this down in the description not for you no yeah so I'm gonna um go and enjoy this because this is insanely delicious and then i'll catch up with you afterwards so to walk you guys through my current training schedule i am currently doing six days a week of intentional movement but only three days a week of actual like workouts so three days a week i am doing full body resistance training based workout doing as heavy lifting as I physically can with the equipment that I have. So it's a lot of heavier body weight movements like pistol squats, decline push-ups, pull-ups, stuff like that. And then thankfully my roommate actually has a curl bar with about 40 pounds of weight on it. So I've been using that to train as well. And he just got a weighted vest. So I used that for weighted walking lunges once and that was fun. Oh, hello kitty. Hi. Hello, sir. So I'm doing that three days a week and trying to spread that out evenly throughout the week. So I don't have specific training days right now, but I'll do like 
Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, or whatever, and then three other days during the week, three times a day, for three days, I will do lighter body weight and resistance band work for like four to 10 minutes max, usually closer to like five minutes. So it ends up being about 20 minutes of total activity throughout the day spread out into three chunks. So this will be stuff like body weight squats or resistance band squats, body weight walking lunges, incline push up, banded rows, banded overhead presses. These are just examples of the different kinds of exercises that I'm doing. And so the purpose behind training this way of doing three bigger workouts and then three days of smaller workouts is that when you resistance train, you send a muscle building signal to your body. And that signal stays elevated for approximately 72 hours, but usually peaks and caps out around 24 to 48 hours and then starts declining. And so ideally, you wanna train again before the signal drops all the way back to baseline so you can kinda of keep it constantly elevated. And so if you do a big resistance training session, and then the next day, do much lighter work that just activates the muscles but doesn't break it down the way heavier work does. The little workouts just like boost that signal just a little bit, they get the blood flowing, they get a little bit of pump in the muscle which helps get more blood flow through the muscle which helps with recovery and repair. And so overall it just like adds a little oomph to the workout that you did the previous day. Even though my current focus is fat loss, I am not doing any cardio, A, I don't really like cardio. B, cardio is not necessary for fat loss at all. In fact, it is disadvantageous for most people unless you love cardio and plan on sticking with it because cardio actually slows down your metabolism which ultimately makes fat loss more difficult. In the first few weeks, it's great. It gives you a little bit of boost. It helps you lose more fat. But after those first few weeks, once your body starts adapting, it becomes harder and harder to lose fat, which is why so many people plateau when they use cardio for fat loss because their body just adapts to it and then you either have to keep doing more cardio and add more and more and more on or drop your calories even lower, neither of which end up being very fun. The only cardiovascular based activity that I will be doing on this fat loss journey and for the rest of my life is going on my regular walks throughout the day or aiming to hit 10,000 steps per day, which I know takes me about an hour of walking, which is why I aim for 10,000 steps. There's no magical thing that happens when you hit 10,000 steps. It's just that for me, if I hit 10,000 steps, I know I've been active and moving for roughly an extra hour throughout the day. But here's why this isn't the same as using cardio for fat loss, because I am not going on these walks to burn calories. My body has already adapted to this amount of activity. I'm not gonna burn more calories by going for these walks and I'm not gonna start burning fewer calories because my body's gonna continue to adapt. And this is something I've been doing since I finished Project Comeback a year and a half ago. And so my body's adapted to this. I'm not getting anything out of this calorie wise. What I am getting out of it is improved health because staying active throughout the day improves your health. Sitting, being sedentary throughout the day is really not good for you. And so setting a daily step count or just a daily activity goal will help combat the negative health effects of a sedentary lifestyle. And the healthier you are, the easier fat loss becomes. So this is not a direct fat loss tool. It's like an indirect fat loss tool because it keeps me healthier, which will help me lose fat. But I am not walking to lose fat if that makes sense. I would continue walking no matter what my goals were. If my goals were to build muscle, if my goals were just to maintain my health, whatever it is, I will be walking. Plus it's also just so necessary for my mental health. Like, if I can't walk around and stay active during the day, I will go crazy. All right, it is basically dinner time, which means I have one more little mini workout session left with some resistance bands, just get the blood flowing, get that muscle building signal just pumped up just a wee bit, so let's do it. So I can eat.
All right, so this dinner that I'm about to make is the dinner recipe from day one of the BuzzFeed Clean Eating Challenge. I've made just a few modifications to it, kind of because I was out of ingredients, kind of because I wanted to add a few things. Um, so I will list everything that I changed in the description if you want to check out the recipe, but basically it's slow cooker shredded chicken with cauliflower rice and green beans, which sounds so boring and plain, but oh my God, the way it's like cooked and the spices and stuff that are added to it. Oh, it's literally mind blowing and game changing. Now it's time for dessert. So I'm gonna have one of my Nuko cinnamon coconut wraps. So I'm gonna have one of these and then where'd I put my chocolate? I'm also gonna go ahead and have the last half a bar of the Who Kitchen vanilla quinoa crispy dark chocolate. I don't know what it is about these, but they're so good at satisfying my sweet tooth. All right, it's basically bedtime, so I'm not gonna be eating anymore today. So our total macro count for the day is 140 grams of protein, 142 grams of carbs, and 65 grams of fat, which brings us to a total of 1,713 calories, which is just a smidge below what I'm aiming for on average for the week. Next week, I'm going to be going back up to my maintenance calories, so I will talk through all of that, why I'm doing it, how I'm doing it, etc. So stay tuned for that, but for now, if you liked this video, please give a big thumbs up, because it really does support me and my channel. Leave a little comment down below, say hey, let me know what your current fitness and aesthetic goals are, Please share this video with your friends, your family, your Facebook, your Instagram, your Twitter, etc. If you want to see more videos from me all about fat loss, you can check them out over here. To see future videos from me all about fat loss and health and fitness, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hit the little notification bell so you get notified when I post a new video. And I will see you very soon. Bye.